Our second reading comes from Job 23, verses 1 through 10. Then Job replied, Even today my complaint is bitter. His hand is heavy in spite of my groaning. If only I knew where to find him, if only I could go to his dwelling. I would state my case before him and fill my mouth with arguments. I would find out what he would answer me and consider what he would say. Who would oppose me with great power? Would he oppose me with great power? No, he would not press charges against me. There an upright man can present his case before him and I would be delivered forever from my judge. But if I go to the east, he is not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the way that I take. When he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Thank you, sir. Good morning once again. You know, it's been a while now. I've been really begging Pastor Cindy to let me come and speak at your church. Just please, for the love of God. I said, for the love of God, please let me come and speak at your church. But she wouldn't let me. She, she said, until you bring um, proof that you've been back to see your psychiatrist. So I did bring her proof, not that I was back to see my psychiatrist, but because I had been seeing my psychiatrist, my psychiatrist and I had been seeing him for so long that now he has a psychiatrist. So <laughs> oh, hallelujah. Um, I do want to thank Pastor Cindy for um, inviting me to share a word with you this morning. Um, I still don't know why she did it. And, and by the end of what I have to share with you, you'll be wondering, well, why in the world did she? Oh, okay, but seriously, folks, you know, I always wanted to say that. Um, she, knows that I'm a certif she knows that I'm a certified nutcase. So, um, so I promise you I'm not going to be dignified uh, this morning. But I am going to give you a word from the Lord. Because God is good. Amen. And all the time. All the time. Amen. And you know, it's easy for us to confess that when, when we're sitting in church on a Sunday morning and, and, and everything is nice. And, and I mean, look at the weather today. It's just, it's just beautiful. And it's easy for us to confess how good God is. But every once in a while, it, it, it's not a sunny Sunday morning. It's a, a dark and cloudy Monday afternoon. And, uh, and, and, and when the, the, the heavy rains are, are washing and crumbling our, our little lives away, how good is God then? Whenever I think about how good God is, especially in those, those, those storms of life, when they come, whenever I think about how good God truly is, I think about the book of Job. Primarily because there's such a powerful message in that book. Such a powerful message. As a matter of fact, the very first chapter of Job tells us this. Uh, in chapter 1, verses 6 through 12, says, Now there was a day when the sons of God came to show themselves before the Lord. Satan came with them. And the Lord said to Satan, 
where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord and said, from traveling around the earth and walking around on it. And the Lord said to Satan, have you thought about my servant Job? For there is no one like him on all the earth. He is without blame, a man who is right and good. He honors God with fear and turns away from sin. And then Satan answered the Lord and he said this, he said, does Job fear God for nothing? Have you not made a well around him and, and his house and all that he has on every side? You've brought good to the work of his hands and he has received more and more in the land. But put your hand now out and touch all that he has and for sure he will curse you to your face. Then the Lord said to Satan, see, all that he has is in your power. Only don't touch him. And then Satan went out from the Lord. So now, allow me this moment to encourage you as I try to encourage myself. When when Pastor Cindy mentioned about me coming to, to, to bring a word for you, I had a, a, a thousand sermons going through my head, and I said, you know what? Instead of doing a sermon, I think I'll just testify and let God speak through that. And God said, thank you. Now move out of my way and let me do so. And <laughs> so once upon a time, there was you. And you lived where you live. You lived with the people you were with, and you lived how you lived. And one day, something happened that changed your life forever. Not a bad thing, this was a good thing. You had an encounter with Jesus Christ. Now, you struggled at first, not sure how you, to live from day to day, but soon everything just seemed to fall into place. And everywhere you walked, the sun seemed to always shine, right? It seemed um, like everything was just wonderful. We, with the sun shining and the birds seeming uh, to, to always be singing in the trees and a gentle breeze blowing wherever you went. And all was right with the world. And you lived happily ever after. Right? Yeah. That's how fairy tales go. Um, that's how many, many fairy tales go. As a matter of fact, that's how it seemed that, that, that it would be in my life when I accepted the Lord as a preteen. Because it was just such a wonderful experience. But wouldn't it be nice if our walk with the Lord really did make it seem like everywhere we went, the sun would always shine and a gentle breeze would always blow and birds would always sing and, and all would be right in the world. And we would live happily ever after. Wouldn't it just be wonderful if our walk with the Lord created around us a happily ever after. But you know, in reality, life happens. And I guarantee you, you can ask those who have birthdays today, the longer you live, life keeps happening. And it's not always good. Even as we strive to do our best to walk with the Lord, life happens. And sometimes it seems more than we can bear. In fact, sometimes we can even get the feeling that God has deserted us. Oh, no, not me. You know, that, I mean, I, when I accepted the Lord, I, I, it was for keeps, and, and God would never, I've never, ever felt that God had 
deserted me. Sure, there are some people who will deny that fact. But if we can get past that second face that we put on for Sunday morning, you know, that face we put on before we leave the house. We've been crying all night, and now we got to get up, and now we got to go and face the day. And so now I got to reach in my door and grab this other face and put it on. <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you, you know what I mean? <laughs> and and we, we have to put on that other, that, that other face. But if we can get past that, if we can get past that holier-than-thou kind of attitude, we will, we will realize that we have felt that way sometimes. God knows I have. And, and it's okay. It's okay to, to, to feel that way. I'm, I'm here to say, to tell you that it's okay to feel that way. Uh, because God really is big enough. And he so loves us enough to understand that we fall down sometimes. And some of us fall down more times than, than we want. But we do fall down sometimes. And, and, and so just having that feeling that he's deserted us, it's not a permanent denial of his existence. It's just a temporary doubting of his power. You believe that? It's not a permanent denial of his existence. It's just a temporary doubting of his power. And it's not a decision to run out on God, but a feeling that we've run out of God. You know how you run out of bread, you run out of milk, you run out of gas. We run out of bourbon. Who said that? <laughs> <laughs> we run out of things, but sometimes we get to that point where it feels that we run out of God. Let me explain. Have you ever felt that the problem was too great? Or that God was saying, you're on your own with this one? Have you ever felt like the situation was your own doing and you shouldn't even be asking him to help anyway? Or that maybe you cried out to him just once too often. Have you ever felt so very far from his presence that you didn't even think he could hear you cry? What do you do when you feel like you've run out of God? Well, that situation that you're thinking about, that you have in your mind right now, that situation... And situations like those are the situations that lead me to this 23rd chapter of Job. And if you will bear with me, I'd like to unfold it for you. And then I'll get out of your way. <laughs> chapter 23, verse 1 says this. Then Job answered, even today my complaining is bitter. His hand is heavy, even when I cry inside myself. If only I knew where to find him, that I might go where he is. I would tell him how things are with me, and my mouth would be ready to argue. I would know his answer, and he could think about, or, or I could think about what he would Say to me, would he go against me using his great power? No. He would listen to me. There, a man who is right could reason with him. 
and I will be set free from my judge. After I gave my life to the Lord, and during my years as a pastor, I can recall some wonderful, wonderful times with the Lord. We would laugh together. We would cry together. We would walk and talk together. We would, we would sit and have deep conversations and share those conversations together. And we would dance. Oh, I can remember some wonderful, wonderful dances in this dance of life that I shared with the Lord. It was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful journey where it all seemed right with my little world. And then doggone it if life didn't happen. Life happened and it seemed that everything I knew Everything that made me who I was, it turned into sand. And even though I tried so desperately to hold on, just like sand, <laughs> it slipped through my fingers. And as I stood now on what had become um, a desert, Wondering what had happened and how it could have happened in my life. I suddenly came to realize that the desert sand was not the dance floor that I had gotten so used to. I suddenly came to realize that the laughter and the music and, and, and all of the rejoicing and everything, it, it had all stopped. And there was nothing left but the silence and the tears and the darkness. There was obviously a problem, but was it something that I had said or something that I had, had done to cause this? And then came the feeling that maybe, just, just maybe, the problem that I had was bigger than the God that I was serving. Or maybe he hadn't seen the problem. Why? Because he had already gone off and was walking and talking with someone else and, and chatting and sharing conversations with someone else and, and dancing our dance with someone else. Or maybe I had just taken up too much of his time and, and suddenly I was met with the feeling of being totally and utterly alone, captivated by the feeling that I had run out of God. What, what do you do when you feel like you've run out of of God. Let's go back to the 23rd chapter of Job. Verse 3. If only I knew where to find him, that I might go where he is, I would tell him how things are with me, and my mouth would be ready to argue. I would know his answer and could think about what he would say to me. Would he go against me using his great power? Uh-uh. He would listen to me. There, a man who is right could reason with him. And I would be set free by my judge. Listen to verse 8. Verse 8 says, but if I go to the east, he's not there. If I go to the west, I don't find him. When he's at work in the north, I do not see him. And when he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. Have you ever been there? Am, am I all alone? Am I by myself even now? When I can think about Job's words and think about if, he, if, if 
only I knew where to find him. Have you ever had a struggle that was so... One of those struggles where there's no words. It's just a struggle that was so, ugh, you know, where you just couldn't find God anywhere. Just couldn't find him. You see him at work in, in, in this person's life, and you see God at work in this person's life, and you see him doing work over here, and you see him doing work over there. And you just wanted to be in his presence so you can re reason with him. God, look, I can see that you're working in all of these people's lives, but you, but you forgot about me. What about me? Sometimes we feel that he has deserted us. So there I was, feeling that I had run out of God and feeling totally alone. So I thought, well, at least I still have my family and my closest friends. <laughs> but how many of you know that sometimes troubles can get to be too much? And your family and closest friends don't even seem to be your family and closest friends. So I stood there crying in the desert, and some of those who I knew in my heart of hearts would never, ever leave my side. They had left my left side, my right side. They left my front, my back, my top, my bottom, and they left me wide open to whatever was coming my way. And on top of everything else, they would stand on a distant shore, so to speak, yelling out to me all the things that I must have done wrong to be in the situation that I was in. And I kept silent. Even though at times they even had me doubting myself, I kept silent. But there came what the Bible calls a fullness of time. And in that fullness of time, God said, Vincent Stephen Mills. Only two voices have called me Vincent Stephen <laughs> Mills. One was my mother. And when she called me Vincent Stephen Mills, she called me that because, why? You've been there too. <laughs> and, and, and second, the second voice is God. And you know why he called me by my name? By my full name? Because he was about to pronounce a word. And he said, this word is for you. And what God had for me, it was for me. And he said, Vincent Stephen Mills, I know you feel that you're alone. I know you felt for a while that you've been alone, but you are not alone. He said, I have never left your side. This was only a test. I was trusting you with trouble. And I trusted you with trouble because I knew that you would never leave my side. He said, I knew what you were going through, when you were going through it where you were going through it, and believe me, it hurt me to watch you go through it. And then he said this. He said, but none of it was about you. 
Mm. I don't think they heard me. He said, none of this that you went through was about you. I needed other people to see you go through what you went through and to see what you look, would look like when you came out on the other side of through. And immediately I heard Job. He said this, he said, but if I go to the east, he's not there. If I go to the west, I do not find him. When he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. Now watch this. Watch this. Do not miss his part. He said, when he is at work in the north, I do not see him. When he turns to the south, I catch no glimpse of him. But he knows the path that I take. There it is. See, an amen went right there. An amen went right there. But he knows the path that I take. No matter what I'm going through, even when I feel that I've run out of God, even when I feel that God is nowhere to be found, even when I feel that God has deserted me, he knows the path that I take. He knows where I am. He knows what I'm going through. And he is by my side every step of the way, whether I feel him there or not. But he knows the path that I take. And when he has tested me, I will come forth as gold. So what do you do when you feel you've run out of God? Well, you come to the realization that you can't run out of God. God, there's an endless supply of God. God comes with free refills. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> God comes with free refills. You can't run out of God because the third chapter of Lamentations tells us that the Lord's mercies are new every morning. Every morning, whether we wake up high on a mountaintop or down in the valley, whether we wake up to the sunshine and birds singing in the trees or to a raging storm crumbling our little lives away, the Lord's mercy is there for us. Amen. All we have to do is remember that the God we serve is greater than the mess we're going through. Amen? That tasted good. Let me just say that again. That, that just tasted good on my tongue. I, I got to say it again. The God we serve is greater than the mess we're going through. So what do you do when you feel you've run out of God? You take a deep breath. And then consider his servant, Job. And then we find our strength in trusting the God who's trusting you with trouble. Amen? Amen. Amen. He's always going to be faithful. I, get, I guarantee you. In fact, Scripture says, test him and see if he won't be faithful. I don't know if the God that you serve is always faithful, but the one that I serve has never, listen, he has never let me down. Amen. There have been times that I felt that he had let me down. There have been more times than that that I have let him down. But he has never let me down. Down. He has always been faithful. And if 
you don't mind, here we go. <laughs> One of my favorite hymns. I'd like to sing for you right now. Would that be okay? <laughs> I, I, I would just like to sing that for you right now. I like to do it a cappella. So you have the rest of the day off. <laughs> with pain. <laughs> wait, wait, with overtime. <laughs> but one of my favorite, favorite, favorite hymns, and I know it's one of yours too, and, and, and if it isn't, then it should be. It, it, it's this. Come listen to a story about a man named Jed. Put, no, I'm kidding. <laughs> sorry. <laughs> I, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But great is thy faithfulness. I mean, what a beautiful, beautiful hymn. Um, that is. And what a beautiful way it is to, to, to live your life and believe in that him. So i like to do that for you right now. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, thou forever will be. Second verse says, summer and winter and springtime and harvest, sun, moon, and stars in their courses above. Join with all nature in manifold witness to thy great faithfulness, mercy, and love. Great is thy faithfulness Great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand had provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Pardon for sin and the peace that endure it. Thine own dear presence to cheer and to guide. Strength for today and bright hope for tomorrow. Blessings all mine with ten thousand beside. Great is thy faithfulness, oh, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, Lord, unto me. Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. Little ones to him belong, they are weak, but he is strong, yes. Jesus loves me, oh yes, Jesus loves me, yes, Jesus loves me, the Bible.
boat tells me so. Great is thy faithfulness, oh, great is thy faithfulness. Morning by morning, new mercies I see. All I have needed, thy hand hath provided. Great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, great is thy faithfulness, Lord unto me.